The goal of this experiment is to determine the neurological changes in maternal rats through behavioral analysis and neuron protein expression patterns. All experiments for this PRISM project have been approved by the Longwood University Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. The first step is to obtain pregnant rats. We will be using approximately 70 day old Sprague Dolly female rats from Teutonic Biosciences. This summer we will be studying 18 maternal rats to add to our 2015 behavioral experiment using 12 maternal rats for a total of 30 animals. This number should allow us to generate replicable statistical significant data. Once the pups are delivered, mothers are allowed to care for their young pups for six to nine days. Pups in this age range are comparable to other maternal research studies. Each mother rat is placed into a new cage and allowed to acclimate for 20 minutes. After acclimation period, a litter of eight pups is introduced. We will video record the mother's response to the pups, including latency to retrieve the pups, time spent grooming and nursing the pups, and the time spent on non-maternal behaviorals, such as sleeping. In this study, each mother rat participates in six separate trials, which will be randomly organized. Eight own pups and zero alien pups, four own pups and four alien pups, three own pups and five alien pups, two own pups and six alien pups, one own pup and seven alien pups, and then finally zero own pups and eight alien pups. The alien pups are age matched from different litters of the other mother rats not being tested in that specific trial. In addition to behavioral experiment, we will also be analyzing the neural tissue of mother rats for expression of CFOS protein. CFOS is expressed in response to exposure to novel stimuli in mammalian brains. By studying protein expression, we can determine which brain regions are responsible for the observed behaviors. To count neurons, we must first be able to visualize protein expression. This can be done via immunocytochemistry. Once visualized, we can then use software for neuroquantification and eventually data analysis. This method can help further data analysis in neuroscience by determining which protein in specified brain regions are where neuronal activity occurs. For our experiment, we're going to be working with CFOS protein, which is a well-studied neuronal activity model. Following behavioral trials, we will use standard protocol to preserve, isolate, and store maternal rat brains prior to sectioning. First, ensure that all material and supplies needed are accounted for as well as proper safety regulations are being followed such as covers, lab coats, and glasses. During sectioning, place each section in a 30-well co-star tray with approximately 300 microliters of phosphate buffered saline or PBS. After sectioning is complete, move on to immunocytochemistry. Wash the brain sections with PBS three to five times, shaking for five minutes after each wash. Next, add the primary antibody to each well and store in the fridge overnight. On day two, wash the sections again with PBS to remove unbound primary antibody. After washing, secondary antibody is added for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, again, wash three times in PBS for five minutes. Then add avenin biotin complex, ABC, to tag the secondary antibody. Finally, DAB. This chemical, which is a mutagen to our cells, so extra precaution must be taken, causes a color change that allows us to visualize the protein. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Look at my DAB. Get in there. Lastly, wash tissue in PBS and store in 20 degrees Celsius in fridge until ready to place on microscope slides. When creating a wet mountain slide, of the brain tissue, place a brain section on the slide and drop distilled water to remove foldings and allow for the brain to spread out across the slide, using a paintbrush to aid in this process. Once the slide is removed, remove the water, add a drop of Paramount, and cover the microscope slide with a cover slip. Store the slide in a slide box for further analysis. There are many methods and protocols to immunocytochemistry, but the key to a successful brain stain is by creating and following a specific protocol for immunocytochemistry. For our lab, this will help decrease the probability of human
Utilize a brain atlas to ensure proper sectioning. The next step in counting neurons is neuroquantification, which uses computer software to output neuron counting and neuron size. Now that the slides are ready to be analyzed, Set up the microscope, camera, and computer to start recording the data. Here, QCapture, Paint, and ImageJ software is, are used to count the number and size of neurons in a specified brain region determined by the research instructor. Why did you choose the prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hippocampus for your study? So we're interested in understanding how mother rats respond to their own and alien pups. In order to get an idea of what's going on in the brain as she's making the decision to care for one pup or the other, we want to look at the brain regions that are responsible for that behavior. So the prefrontal cortex is used for mammalian decision making. The amygdala is both emotional and maternal emotional responses. And the hippocampus is used in learning and memory. So if we look at the neuron, neuronal firing in these regions, we should be able to determine whether or not mothers are having different responses between own and Once the visualized field is selected for the image to capture, open ImageJ to analyze par particles. Here, the darkly stained circles are the neurons to be counted. The results will appear in a new window and recorded in an Excel sheet. So why is video monitoring so important? We want to do video monitoring of our animals for three reasons. The first and primary reason is so that the experimenters can leave the room allowing the rats to conduct their behavior without influence from us. The second reason is that after the behavior is completed, we can have multiple people viewing the video, allowing us to make sure that we have iterator reliability. The third reason that it's nice to take video analyses is that we have computer software that might allow us to analyze the behavior as well, allowing for, you know, maybe we can catch some data that we wouldn't see with the naked eye. The second method for data collection is behavioral analysis, which uses the video footage of maternal rats interacting with their pups to determine the amount of time grooming and the latency period in retrieving the pups. This study is interesting for three reasons. Primarily in the big picture is I'm interested in understanding how does the maternal brain respond to different environmental conditions, and in this case, responding to own versus alien pups. A second thing that we found is that pharmaceutical companies are really interested in these findings because in their experiments, when they're hoping to determine how a drug works on the female brain, they usually just throw whatever pups they have into the mix. Our findings might indicate that it would be better to use a number over 25%, let's say, of own pups um, in those experiments to make sure that the behavior is the same in the control and in the drug condition. The third thing that's come out of our work so far is that there may be a difference between good and bad moms. And so one of the things that we're going to do in PRISM this summer is see if we can identify what's going on in the brains of those moms. Are there differences in oxytocin receptors or perhaps estrogen receptors? Sort of get an idea of what are the neurological underpinnings of, of these different behaviors. Finally, after all data has been collected, conclusions and further outlooks can be drawn from this experiment. So what I found when I ran the experiment was that the 8-own, 4-own, and 3-own group, it took them less time to retrieve the first pup than it did the 2-own, 1-own, and 0-own. So what that means is that 25% or lower, that's when the mother rats will stop treating that group as if they were her own. However, this group is not significantly, or statistically significant. Um, but it is very trendy. We're at the p-value of about 0.08, which is why Teresa will be redoing this experiment so that we can have a higher sample size in order to decrease variance and in hopes of getting uh, statistically significant at the 0.05 level. This summer, Dr. France and I will be working with 18 experimental rats, whereas last summer there was 12 rats in hopes that we increase the sample size to n equals 30 to find statistically significant data. By doing this, we hope to find that the rats have a significant cutoff point between when a mother rat treats her own rats versus alien rats, which we found in previous data to be 25% or less, which is now trending, but we need to be significant. Assuming significance, this data will be presented in the, Neuroscience, the Society of Neuroscience in November and will be written for publication during the fall. Thank you for your time.
Or where they have white shadow. <laughs>